Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Arcane Assist. I'm uh, joined today by Evan. How's it going, Evan? What's up, guys? It's going well. Yeah, so uh, we should mention again, we are doing more Steamroller community integrated development. So this is kind of going to be the status quo for us for a bit that we're going to be focusing on Steamroller 2017 scenarios. But the proviso should be thrown out right at the beginning that this is week one uh, that we're presenting games for. Uh, we do our recording in batches sometimes, so we may be giving this to you in a different week. So if we make a mistake or something has changed since then, it's because we recorded this under the conditions of Steamroller Week 1. Yeah, yeah. It, it it's I guess we're three weeks in potentially at this point. So we'll see what's changed, and you'll you'll probably yell at us in the comments, and that's probably a good thing. Yeah, fi feel free to yell at us in the comments. We're down with that. Yeah, like, we appreciate it because it lets other people know not to do what we're doing. Yeah, no, for sure. And like that feedback's pretty important, especially if you're just kind of glancing or you, you haven't seen the channel much before. Um, so uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the lists that we're playing. I'm playing more Cricks, which has been super exciting. I'm really enjoying playing Cricks. I went on a huge painting binge and I got a ton of my stuff painted up. Uh, today I'm featuring the Witch Coven of Garlgast, who are a little bit of an intimidating caster for me. They're kind of one of the casters I want to love because they're exactly the kind of way I want to play. They've got enormous vectors. They've got a huge toolbox. They have a sick spell list. They can be kind of anywhere and do almost anything, and it's just your fault if you don't figure it out because they're so flexible and so nonlinear. Um, but at the same time, they're, they're terrifyingly fragile as individuals. Um, they can protect themselves very, very effectively, but they can be quite fragile. They have a couple of matchups that are a bit risky, and if you lose, it's your fault. Like, you made a mistake. It's not the Coven's fault. Uh, I am playing them, of course, with their companion, Aragor, the little floaty ball. Uh, with their Shadow Combine as an attachment, they're allowed one attachment, and it's attached to all of them. It's it's weird, but it's on their card. Uh, they have two Death Rippers and Erebus in their battle group. He's the guy who freezes folks when he hits them. Um, I also have Iacos, uh, Iacos 1 in this case, whose battle group is two Stalkers, a War Witch Siren, and a Machine Wraith, and then two max units of Satixis Raiders, each with Satixis Raiders Sea Witches. What'd you bring, Evan? So, I brought my good friend Zadesh, a completely different list that, than I've played before. Um, but I've, well, sorry, I have played it before, just... Not as much as my other Zadesh list. Yeah, like you, you have your OTC Zadesh list that you featured on the channel that you've played like a ton at a bunch of tournaments. This is definitely a variation for you. Yeah. So I had this great idea of um, I wanted a Zadesh list specifically for guns, even though he's already really good against guns, but mostly guns that see through his ash, ash cloud wall. Um, mm, so nice. he has two soldiers in the battle group. Uh, soldiers are incredibly resilient against guns because they are arm 19, and against shooting attacks and free strikes, they have plus four armor due to their carapace rule. Uh, and Zadesh really likes them as sackpawn targets because of that rule. I also have two Archidons. The Archidons are in this list because they can hide behind the front line of two bugs and then counter charge over them because flying models ignore line of sight when declaring their tar charge target. Sorry. Intervening models. Intervening models, specifically. Yep. So they ignore the soldiers. Uh, soldiers can also do some cute things if I position really uh, in a really specific way. Uh, I can get counter charges that pull charging models out of melee with their reach attacks, which could be fun uh, in the future, not against this list that is basically all infantry that Tim has. Uh, there's there's a bunch of jacks. Mm. There's two stalkers. There's two death rippers. There's, there's five jacks on this list. I'm basically a Kator Jack spam list. Right. Moving <laughs> forward, I have Despoiler. Now, Despoiler was a a character beast that I just debated at length putting in my Zadesh list for multiple reasons. They it, they include Black Arts, which allows Zadesh to keep one of his f spells for free, um, which means after using all the things he wants to do in a turn, he can generally camp one as opposed to nothing. Big difference. And Dark Shroud on counter charges, which just t turns some beasts up to 11, such as counter charging Archidons, who are on feet turn suddenly past rank 19 with a critical pitch at Matt 8. Yep. Uh, so that's fun. Gladiator, because Rush is 
integral to the fact that, uh, well, integral to making soldiers work because otherwise they're just speed three heavies, which is not particularly exciting. And we have a Kraya because, as I stated at the beginning, this list was more or less meant for gun lines that can shoot through, see through, ignore cloud effects that block a line of sight. Uh, it's worth pointing out at this uh, kind of weird, wacky matchup that you're seeing. Um, we sort of did a bit of a, like, I bring the steamroller pairing, you bring the steamroller pairing element. So this was paired with a Denegra list that had a lot of guns in it. And uh, your list is, what was the off list you had for the Zadesh list? So I misunderstood what Tim meant when he oh, told right, me to bring right, a steamroller sorry. list, because I only heard bring three lists we're recording today. So I was like, cool, I'll bring my Resnick 2 list that you saw on the channel. I'll bring Thexus. And I'll bring Zadesh. So Evan's, air quotes, pairing was Thexus and Zadesh. <laughs> yeah, I, I messed up, guys. I mean, that's a really <laughs> decent pairing. I'm not going to lie. Like, I think Thexus and Zadesh would uh, be be good friends. They're both horrible. <laughs> if you follow the fluff, Zadesh is just the worst. Hey, he just wants a not united empire under Makeda. That's all he wants. Yeah, that seems like thousands of years of civil war that have happened in the past. Let's seems that. legit. That's exactly what he wants. Anyway, he's bringing so it back. The point is, I think Evan dropped this list because he was anxious about the list that had a ton of guns, and I ended up playing the list that didn't. So some elements of this may seem a little un- unwieldy. Yeah. Also, Kraya makes uh, soldiers arm twenty five against non blessed guns. Yeah, it's pretty good. And and I think your Hylus Sight gun can shoot my stealth uh, living ca- casters and stationary them. That too. Or paralyze them, should I say. Uh, and the the general package of double min beast handlers because they're super good. Yep. Okay, uh, so without further ado, we're going to jump into this. Yeah, so what you can see here is we've separated the board into quadrants. So this, um, this is one of the uh, forms of building terrain setups called uh, quadrant... Um, quadrant setup or quadrant terrain. Um, it has the word quadrant in it. It does. It's in the packet. Uh, so basically the rules here, as you can see us measuring out, is you divide the table into four quadrants, and then you place a piece of terrain within five inches of the center point of the board. Uh, can't be more than five inches away. has to be within five inches. and has to follow all the other rules for terrain, and they can't be within two inches of another piece of terrain unless there are trench. Trenches can connect to each other. Um you know, can't be if it's a uh, restricted piece of terrain in a deployment zone. Uh, anything else can't be within six inches of a board edge. Like all of those things that are currently in the packet. So uh, John is just setting up terrain for Evan and I, so we've got a bit of impartiality. The second stage of the quadrant terrain setup is you put a piece of terrain within five inches of the center point of each quadrant. So you kind of get both. You get... Um, like the terrain that's very, very centrally located, and then you've got terrain that kind of creates a bit of a funnel point to another point to the board. Yeah, I feel like this setup creates boards that are a little more traditional to what people would like kind of naturally do. Uh, this particular table kind of ended up a little wonky with the double trench thing, but aside from that... Yeah, I, I mean, the double trench thing is interesting, and it's allowed, so again, biggest part of the CID process for Steamroller is we want to do the things and give our feedback. So, so far, so good. I mean, we're playing the games, and they're they're interesting. Um, we'll see how the, the scoring pans out. This one's got some interesting scoring elements. Uh, the center zone can be scored by warrior models, and then obviously by warcasters and warlocks. And then the two rectangular zones can be scored by uh, warjacks and warbeasts, and then obviously by warcasters and warlocks. And then the flags can only be scored by warcasters and warlocks. One of the things that's weird about the Witch Coven is there's three warcasters they're not a unit, so they can just run off and each score a different piece of geometry. It's really good, and and also the girl, Igregor, the Igregor can do a thing, right? Yes, he is also a solo that can score a thing on he his own. He is a solo. He is a warrior solo, not a warcaster. Okay, so he can score at the center zone. Yep, and he can contest anything, whereas they can't contest. Uh... And he's almost impossible to kill. Yeah. See, he's thirteen seventeen with steady. But when you hit him, he has to send his damage to the witches. You can divide it up however you want. So you can put five points of damage on each witch, and then they can each spend a focus to reduce that to zero. Fair and balanced. Anyway, what are you doing, Tim? Tell us what you're doing on your turn. Uh, <laughs> basically unpacking. Um, they've got some cool things, like the ability to sort of cycle upkeeps really aggressively, which is something that's not really in the game very much anymore. So Aragor runs, witch runs, one of the witches... Um, 
just just sort of walked up. Um, the Satixis Raiders basically just fanned out into two evenly distributed sections. Uh, Iacos, you know, walked up, jumped through an escort. Uh, the stalkers that he has kind of both ran up, stayed out of range of the um, uh, Sentinels charging them. And uh, then I put Infernal Machine on the Arc Node and ran 18 inches super, super deep. Put the Wraith Engine behind him because Wraith Engines are good at scoring. And then the last witch cast Infernal Machine on this Stalker because, or pardon me, this Stalker, this uh, uh, Death Ripper because she wants to have it go the world in the other direction. And then she charged uh, a Sentinel, or pardon me, yeah, Sentinel? No, soldier, soldier. Soldier. She charged a Soldier after throwing up Veil of Mists in her control area. And just bumped a Satixis Raider. So the witches are all pretty far up, having charged, ran, and, and walked. They've got basically perfect conjunction, which is their rule where they create a triangle around the ball. Probably not quite, but they're certainly well positioned to have it next turn. And I've got arc nodes who both ran 18 and threatened as much of the board as they possibly could. So Tim's got a lot further up, up the board than I thought he would. Um, having two units of speed seven infantry as well as jacks that go from speed seven to speed nine that yep. run 18 inches off the board that are arc nodes as well as two fast war jacks that advance deploy puts me in a tight spot. So Zadesh typically likes to brick up a lot. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to just make Fort kick ass. I'm going to put the bugs up front. I'm going to put despoiler in the middle and I'm going to flank the despoiler on either side with Archidons that they can counter charge over. I'm going to put the Gladiator in a spot where he can protect his dash. I'm going to put the Crayon in a spot where he screens his dash as well. And I'm going to use clouds to fill holes. Seems good. I debated running the Archidons to engage the Arc Nodes on either side. You're about two to three inches out on either side, so I figured I might as well just put them in appropriate counter charging positions. I could have also engaged a Stalker, I believe. Maybe. I, it, it's close. I don't remember uh, if I measured it or not, but I mean, they could try <laughs> engaging them is like it's okay, but I can ghost walk them, activate them, have them move into position, and then go back to the activation of another warcaster to finish casting the spells I want to arc with, because I have three casters with three separate activations. This game is dumb. Um, <laughs> Witch Coven break all the rules, people. They break all the rules. So I move Soldier up behind the wall because I figure if he's going to send a heavy after me, um, he'll have to go over the wall. Yep. Even though if you, you hit on the first shot against stationary with Erebus, it makes it harder for everything else. <laughs> Sorry, you, heavies? I, I, don't, I don't follow. I brought nothing but ridiculously light attacks. Satixis have reach. Correct. Uh, I'm not particularly scared of them because of my armor, and also most of the things in my list are steady, kind of incidentally, because Archidons are serpentine, bugs have a lot of legs, despoilers hiding behind those things. Yep. And uh, gladiators, meh. And, like, just kind of as a general rule in Scorn, stuff doesn't care if you force it to shake. Like, I don't care if I have to shake Shadowbind, I don't care if I have to shake Stationary, I don't care if I have to shake Knockdown assuming my spirit's still a thing, because beast handlers are just going to whip off the Fury anyway. Yeah, that's true. Um, it's worth noting the Stygian Abyss used to have crit uh, Shadowbind. It no longer has that. It now has crit blind. So I can't blind the Despoiler, uh, and I can't blind the Kraya, because Isle of Sight gives you immunity to blind now. Um, yep. Because fluff reasons. Um, but, wow. but also, like, you know, that's that's a bit of a change for that one. Like, just... Uh, a slight tweaking to it. So, I important before you do your turn, uh, I have put the gladiator up and the soldier up and put a cloud in between them and Zadesh is behind that cloud. Inviolable Resolve is on to spoiler and I do have my spell Battle Charged up. So just, just for the friends at home, that's two for Inviolable Resolve, two for Battle Charged, two for Burning Ash? Correct. On a Fury 6 caster? Correct. Camping Zero? Correct. Let's do this. So... Um, the plan this turn, I briefly debate trying to kill a bug and decide that sounds like a lot of work and a plan to kill Zadesh. There's a whole bunch of stuff that can counter charge me. So to make this plan work, I'm going to have to activate my caster like three times, which is fine. We'll do that. 
<laughs> so, um, I look for vectors in the arc nodes. I upkeep Infernal Machine for free because I've got the Wither Shadow Combine. But ultimately, I need to put Infernal Machine onto the other arc node. Uh, so, I upkeep Escort on Iacos. And he allocates two um, to one of his stalkers, putting it on three. And he allocates one to the other stalker, putting it on two. Now, the plan is going to involve getting Curse of Shadows onto Zadesh. And ideally, also blind. If I can blind Zadesh uh, with a crit shadow bind, or pardon me, with a, a critical Stygian Abyss, um, that makes him minus four mat, uh, makes him minus four defense, makes him a lot easier to hit. And then I can put a bunch of stalker attacks into him, which is kind of how I want to do. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, to do all of this, I have to cast Infernal Machine, which costs me two. I have to cast Curse of Shadows, which costs me three, taking me to five. And I have to cast uh, Stygian Abyss for three more, which costs eight. So I'm only going to get one Stygian Abyss on you. And I'll be able to boost damage on it. That's my nine. But that's going to be everything. So I'm hoping that I get the boosted crit, because everything's boosted for free because of perfect conjunction. Or pardon me, perfect something else. Perfect conjunction? Probably. Anyway, once I get the witches in the triangle, all my attack rolls are boosted. That's not a problem. When you with make me. the Deathly Hallow sign. Yes, that's correct. Yes. You get boosted still. I make the Deathly Hallow sign and I get boosted attacks. It's pretty great. Um, but presuming that I do that, uh, I'm hoping for that crit blind. If it doesn't work, I'm going to have to boost attacks with stalkers. And I don't want to have to do that. So first things first, I send an arc node in and I'm like, hey, tag you up in melee. Soldier, sup? Do you want to counter charge with something so I don't have to worry about counter charge from that thing? And Evan's like, no, I want you to have to worry about counter charge from that thing. I'm like, yes, that's probably the right answer. I hope it was. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was the right answer. You gave me a look and I wasn't sure. I was like, do you want to counter charge that? And he's like, I do not. And I was like, okay, that's 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 fine. I guess I'm going to have to win legitimately because you're going to be a good player if that's not I, okay. I don't know. I could have tried to counter charge, get lucky, crit slam you, in, or crit pit you into the wall. And then you still have to worry about the soldier counter charging. But also, that's a slim chance. And also, it's super easy to type the soldier with just running Satixis. That could be much more of a problem. So, I ran an arc node who had Infernal Machine. One of the witches activated to put it onto him. So, uh, she moved into position to be part of a triangle later and cast Infernal Machine. And that guy is now in my back arc. Yes, the arc node is in his back arc and ran far enough that he is outside both the Kraya and the Gladiator's countercharge vector in terms of line of sight. So, this to Texas, I debate countercharging with the spoiler, and I'm not entirely sure he can move in such a way that he would get to that Satixis. Satyr lady. Satyr lady. I like it. And I, I, there are Arkadon wings, and the spoiler's got a bunch of spindly bits coming off of him, and I'm like, I don't want to try even moving him. So I'm just going to say I don't countercharge with the Arkadon or him. And we're going to stay where we are. Uh, the second uh, Satixis who gets into position, you do choose to countercharge. You take the uh, the green, uh, yellow-green Archidon, and you countercharge into position where, where I charge the spoiler. You stay in my melee range, and you get into a position where you can yes. an attack against me. Here, now that I've kind of realized what you're doing with Stalkers, I try to countercharge into such a position that it makes it harder for you to try and get into jumpy places yeah and it does it's uh it's a problem like you, you put him there and i'm like oh yeah that's a bit of an issue like i'm gonna have to kind of position around that which makes where i want to land in the cloud a bit more awkward because ideally i'd like to be out of zadesh's line of sight when i jump into melee with him so that counter charge isn't a problem at all but I'm just going to hope that I blind him, and then we don't have any issues, because at blind at minus four, Matt, he doesn't have a particularly good chance of hitting a stalker when he needs to roll boxcars. So, uh, this Sedixus runs, and it engages the Gladiator to deny his countercharge. The rest of them just run to not block the lane for the stalkers that I'm about to send in, be in not entirely irrelevant spots, and double up on some engagements. And the Kraya is in such an awkward pos position base to base with the Gladiator that he just does not have an angle he can countercharge to get that Satixis. Yes, that one. Apparently just saying it more aggressively makes you say it correctly, so 
that that We're has worked stick with that one. <laughs> worked for many things for me in the past. Okay, next step. Uh, I move another witch up, who I believe had to run, uh, and then the third and final witch moves up. She pops feet. And we're going to do that whole Stygian Abyss, Curse of Shadows, and boost damage somewhere in there. I choose to do the Stygian Abyss first, hoping to just get the crit blind. It gives me a little bit more information about how much more I want to go in on this. I don't land the crit blind. Um, I boost damage. Stadesh's arm 16. Uh, Stace minus 4. I do 8 points of damage to him. Uh, we then make the Curse of Shadows attack. This one actually gets a crit, which is a little like insult to injury because it doesn't do anything. But he's Curse of Shadowed. So Stadesh is down to a 15-14. Not a, not a great defensive stat line for a Warcaster. Nine boxes left? It would be great in Menoth. Uh, I believe so. Yep. Uh, sorry, looking, I can see my phone from here. Twelve boxes left. That did four damage. Oh, right. Sorry. Yes, it did four <laughs> damage. I Sorry, I, I rolled an eight. That's four damage. Uh, okay. Oh, I did not roll that in the tray. Wow. Um, I apologize, audience. But uh, I countercharged with Zesh. Who has flank thanks to that soldier. Yeah, so I did feet, so you're minus two mat. I but you go 10. back up to seven and you roll a ten to hit. So you did need an eight to hit, so I was like, maybe you just won't do anything to the stalker. Unfortunately, you crippled cortex, which removes the focus from me, prevents me from jumping into position. And because you have reach, you didn't go into my melee range. So that stalker does nothing, which is unfortunate because that's 50% of my assassination. And a problem. Stalker two. Can't get into my back arc because Stalker 1 is in the way. And also, he doesn't mm -hmm. want to leave the melee range of that Archidon I put there. So he still gets yeah. to jump into melee with Zadesh, just so not in the back arc. Evan made a couple of really strong plays here. Like that Archidon screened the lane pretty well. And Zadesh managed to cripple a big portion of this plan. So now the Stalker has to boost to hit. Um, he does hit his first initial. He chooses to boost, or sorry, doesn't choose to boost damage because he's dice minus 2. Does a little bit of damage. Boosts the second initial. Uh, and that one unfortunately misses. Uh, Zadesh is a 15, I'm a 7, so I need 8s to hit, and I miss the second boosted 8s. And I have 7 boxes like, left after this. You're grievously wounded. I am grievous wounded too. So at least I've softened you up a bunch and made things kind of problematic. My feet is up, so I'm kind of holding my army in reserve. So the next thing that happens is I run a Satixis to uh, get gang on you, and then I charge you with another member of the Satixis Raider unit. Make sure they're all in command. And I'm just going to see if a Satixis can roll a hard 7, because with Gang, they now go to mat 8, which means I need a 7 to hit. 7 to hit on the Satixis Raider. Boom. She nails it. Loves it. She's power 11, so dice minus 3. Needs to roll 10. Rolls an 11. Boom. Kills a dash. Done. So, uh, Fort Kickass was not as impenetrable as previously thought. <laughs> <laughs> However. Yes. Had Zadesh survived that last Satixis Raider, I think there's a pretty good spot spot where there is a pretty good chance that you don't have like anything else that can get to him at that point. It That's probably the end of the turn. However, and this is the thing that I love about Witch Coven, you can't heal, and you have seven boxes left. And you still have Infernal Machine, so you can get anywhere. I can get just about anything I want to just about anywhere I want. Even if you commit resources significantly, kill both stalkers, commit resources, kill both arc nodes, and like you know, use the dash to flashing blade a couple times, you probably have to do that to participate to clear those pieces. Yep. You're camping maybe three, uh, maybe, maybe two, like depending on what the situation ends up being and what you choose to upkeep. And the Aragor itself is a channeler, and I can still just rock like three boosted to hit Stygian Abysses into you, and then maybe charge you with a bunch of Satixis if mm -hmm. they're available. It's not pretty. And I, if you try to block the lane with something, I curse the shadows it so I can move through it without taking a free strike. And if you... Yeah. Like, it's just... Yeah. It's really, really hard to screen yourself against the Witch Coven because they're, they're in your base. Yep. <laughs> Killing your shit. <laughs> in, in this case, in your fort. <laughs> fort kick-ass. Has been infiltrated by witches. It's... <laughs> this is Salem all over again. Oh, boy. All right, guys, that was another episode of Arcane Assist. Uh, I know it's a quick one this time, but I think it's a really cool game, and I hope to feature Witch Coven again on the channel soon. Yeah, diet Arcane Assist after, like, four hour-long episodes in a row. Here's here's the, uh, the takeaway. We don't always play attrition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Next time. Next time. I also have two Archidons.
The Arctons are in this list because they can hide behind the front line of two bugs and then counter charge over them because flying models ignore line of sight when declaring their tar charge target. Sorry. Intervening models. Intervening models, specifically. Yeah. So they ignore the soldiers. Uh, soldiers can also do some cute things if I position really uh, in a really specific way. Uh, I can get counter charges that pull charging models out of melee with their reach attacks, which could be fun uh, in the future, not against this list that is basically all infantry that Tim has. Uh, there's, there's a bunch of jacks. Mm. There's two stalkers. There's two death rippers. There's, there's five jacks in this list. I'm basically a Kator jack spam list. Right. Moving <laughs> forward, I have Despoiler. Now, Despoiler was a, a character beast that I just debated at length, putting in my Zadesh list for multiple reasons. They it, they include Black Arts, which allows Zadesh to keep one of his f spells for free, um, which means after using all the things he wants to do in a turn, he can generally camp one as opposed to nothing. Big difference. And Dark Shroud on counter charges, which just t turns some beasts up to 11, such as countercharging Archidons, who are on feet turned suddenly past rank 19 with a critical pitch at Matt 8. Yep. Uh, so that's fun. Gladiator, because Rush is in Soldier's Arm 25 against non-blessed guns. Yeah, it's pretty good. And and I think your Death 13. Eyeless Sight gun can shoot my stealth uh, living ca casters and stationary them. That too. Or paralyze them, should I say? Uh, and the, the general package of double min beast handlers because they're super good. Yep. Okay, uh, so without further ado, we're going to jump into this. Yeah, so what you can see here is we've separated the board into quadrants. So this um, this is one of the uh, forms of building terrain setups called uh, quadrant, um, quadrant setup or quadrant terrain. Um, it has the word quadrant in it. It does. It's in the packet. Uh, so basically the rules here, as you can see us measuring out, is you divide the table into four quadrants, and then you place a piece of terrain within five inches of the center point of the board. Uh, can't be more than five inches away, has to be within five inches, and has to follow all the other rules for terrain, and they can't be within two inches of another piece of terrain, unless there are trench, trenches can connect to each other. Um, you know, can't be if it's a uh, restricted piece of terrain in a deployment zone, uh, anything else can't be within six inches of a board edge, like all of those things that are currently in the packet. So uh, John is just setting up terrain for Evan and I, so we've got a bit of impartiality. The second stage of the quadrant terrain setup is you put a piece of terrain within five inches of the center point of each quadrant. So you kind of get both. You get um, like the terrain that's very, very centrally located, and then you've got terrain that kind of creates a bit of a funnel point and other points of the board. Yeah, I feel like this setup creates boards that are a little more traditional to what people would like. As individuals, um, they can protect themselves very, very effectively, but they can be quite fragile. They have a couple of matchups that are a bit risky, and if you lose, it's your fault. Like, you made a mistake. It's not the Coven's fault. Uh, I am playing them, of course, with their companion, Aragor, the little floaty ball. Uh, with their Shadow Combine as an attachment, they're allowed one attachment, and it's attached to all of them. It's it's weird, but it's on their card. Uh, they have two Death Rippers and Erebus in their battle group. He's the guy who freezes folks when he hits them. Um, I also have Iacos, uh, Iacos 1 in this case, whose battle group is two Stalkers, a Warwitch Siren, and a Machine Wraith, and then two max units of Satixis Raiders, each with Satixis Raider Sea Witches. What'd you bring, Evan? So, I brought my good friend Zadesh, a completely different list that, uh, than I've played before. Um, but I've, well, sorry, I have played it before, just not as much as my other Zadesh list. Yeah, like you, you have your OTC Zadesh list that you featured on the channel that you've played like a ton at a bunch of tournaments. This is definitely a variation for you. Yeah, so I had this great idea of, um, I wanted a Zadesh list specifically for guns, even though he's already really good against guns, but mostly guns that see through his ash, ash cloud wall. Um, mm, so nice. he has two soldiers in the battle group. Uh, soldiers are incredibly resilient against guns because they are arm 19, and against shooting attacks and free strikes, they have plus four armor due to their carapace rule. Uh, and Zadesh really likes them as sackbond targets because of that rule. 
Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Arcane Assist. I'm uh, joined today by Evan. How's it going, Evan? What's up, guys? It's going well. Yeah, so uh, we should mention again, we are doing more Steamroller community integrated development. So this is kind of going to be the status quo for us for a bit that we're going to be focusing on Steamroller 2017 scenarios. But the proviso should be thrown out right at the beginning that this is week one uh, that we're presenting games for. Uh, we do our recording in batches sometimes, so we may be giving this to you in a different week. So if we make a mistake or something has changed since then, it's because we recorded this under the conditions of Steamroller Week 1. Yeah, yeah. It, it it's I guess we're three weeks in potentially at this point. So we'll see what's changed, and you'll you'll probably yell at us in the comments, and that's probably a good thing. Yeah, fi feel free to yell at us in the comments. We're down with that. Yeah, like, we appreciate it because it lets other people know not to do what we're doing. Yeah, no, for sure. And like that feedback's pretty important, especially if you're just kind of glancing or you, you haven't seen the channel much before. Um, so uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the list that we're playing. I'm playing more Cricks, which has been super exciting. I'm really enjoying playing Cricks. I went on a huge painting binge and I got a ton of my stuff painted up. Uh, today I'm featuring the Witch Coven of Garlgast, who are a little bit of an intimidating caster for me. They're kind of one of the casters I want to love because they're exactly the kind of way I want to play. They've got enormous vectors. They've got a huge toolbox. They have a sick spell list. They can be kind of anywhere and do almost anything, and it's just your fault if you don't figure it out because they're so flexible and so nonlinear. Um, but at the same time, they're they're terrifyingly fragile. Integral to the fact that, uh, well, integral to making soldiers work because otherwise they're just speed three heavies, which is not particularly exciting. And we have a Kraya because, as I stated at the beginning, this list was more or less meant for gun lines that can shoot through, see through, ignore cloud effects that block a line of sight. Uh, it's worth pointing out of this uh, kind of weird, wacky matchup that you're seeing. Um, we sort of did a bit of a, like, I bring the steamroller pairing, you bring the steamroller pairing element. So this was paired with a Denegra list that had a lot of guns in it. And uh, your list is, what was the off list you had for the Zadesh list? So I misunderstood what Tim meant when he oh, told right, me to bring right, a steamroller sorry. list because I only heard bring three lists we're recording today. So I was like, cool, I'll bring my Resnick 2 list that you saw on the channel. I'll bring Thexus and I'll bring Zadesh. So Evan's air quotes pairing was Thexus and Zadesh. <laughs> yeah, I, I messed up, guys. I mean, that's a really <laughs> decent pairing. I'm not going to lie. Like... I think Thexus and Zadesh would uh, be be good friends. They're both horrible. <laughs> if you follow the fluff, Zadesh is just the worst. Hey, he just wants a not united empire under Makeda. That's all he wants. Yeah, that seems like thousands of years of civil war that have happened in the past. Let's seems that. legit. That's exactly what he wants. Anyway, he's bringing so it back. The point is, I think Evan dropped this list because he was anxious about the list that had a ton of guns, and I ended up playing the list that didn't. So some elements of this may seem a little unwieldy. Un yeah. Also, Kraya makes uh, 